There are so many AI tools in academia and research for doing a load of different tasks. So how do you use them to do something like writing a paper? Well, today we're going to go through the academic workflow and all of this stuff will be filled with AI tools. Do you feel yourself teased? Well, let's get into it. So every single part of a peer review paper can now be augmented with AI tools. So this is what a typical peer review paper outline looks like. You've got your abstract, you've got the introduction, methodology, literature review, results, discussion, conclusion, acknowledgements, you know, where you just say thanks to the people that you don't really want to include in the author list, and then references down the bottom. So when we first start with our paper writing process, clearly we need data, and that's where the data interrogation stuff really happens. So in that data interrogation box, you need to put all of that raw data, you need to put all of those kind of uh, little ideas that you think could come together, but you need to understand what the data is actually telling you. And you can use these tools to help you along the way. So you've got Julius AI, which I absolutely love. Julius AI is brilliant. It's like having a little like an analyst in your pocket that's like, oh, this is the sort of stuff you could do. Love it. Then you've also got data line. Now, one of the biggest things I always get asked when I give talks around the world, for example, like at Harvard Business School, don't mind if I do. Well, they always ask like, is my data safe? Yes, your data is safe as long as you use the right tools. So here we've got Julius AI. So Julius AI has a robust, um, good data kind of uh, policy. Now, you need to make sure that you're happy with whatever you use according to your university's guidelines because we also have tools like this, DataLine. So DataLine is open source. You can download it. I've done a uh, video on it in the past. But ultimately here, you can talk to your data with um, a open source and privacy first platform, your data is accessed using your device and stored on your device. No clouds, no sunshine. It just stays on your device. So there are ways to interrogate your data with AI and keep that data safe. Now, there are also ways to use ChatGPT, Claude, or whatever large language model you like in a safe way. And universities are slowly introducing sandboxes. That is the AI with a little bit of a control around it, which means none of the data gets sent out. Now, that's very, very important for a load of research and academia, but make sure your university is working on a sandbox for you, because let me tell you this, all of the big players, they've got one. You need one too. All right then, and also in your data interrogation, good old fashioned Excel or whatever sort of statistical package you want to use are, and there's the rest of them, I don't even know. But this is where we start asking our data questions. With something like Julius AI, you put up your data and then you can be like, oh, what does this tell me? What conclusions can I make from this data? And then you use it to help you kind of speed up the process of understanding what your data is really telling you. Have that conversation directly with your data until you can start forming a little bit of a story in your mind. And that's our next step. All right, then the next step here is create a story. You want to make sure that when you present your paper, there is a clear, logical, compelling story that means the journal has to accept it. So there's a load of tools you can use. So here, ChatGPT, large language models, Claude, it's brilliant. What I've done in the past is I've taken the figures and the diagrams I've generated in my data interrogation and I've put it into something like ChatGPT and I've been like, hey, what story could you tell with this data? I put the captions in it as well. And I'll be honest with you, it comes up with some great options and then you can work with it to create that story. A story should have the reason you're doing it, what you found and a compelling outcome. Ultimately, you're using ChatGPT or Claude or whatever large language model you want to make sure that your story is compelling. But there's even sort of like, uh, let's ever say more gray area ways of doing it because you can use a Gentic AI like Manus or Genspark. This is Manus. In the past, what I've done is I've put in my paper uh, figures and then I've been like, hey, generate a paper draft and it creates a paper draft for you. 
Cyspace also has got a Gentic AI, but ultimately, I think Manus and Genspark have been the best at this in my experience, where I've just put in data and I've said, hey, create a paper. And then it creates the paper and the story for you. And then we've also got even more sort of like a gray zone. We've got, uh, oh, what's that? Gatsby, that's what it is, Gatsby AI. Gatsby allows you to put in that like little bit of a story and then it will build out a paper for you. This is what I was able to build out in Gatsby. And uh, look, let me tell you, it's a paper. I mean, it's got all of the stuff. If you were to put your own data in there, it produces a paper for you. Then you can use that to model your own uh, story to make sure that, uh, you know, you're, you're saying what you want about your results in the way you want to say it. But there are AI tools that now produce a full paper draft that allows you to kind of like get a handle on how you could say it. I'm not saying you should submit this right away, but it's a nice sort of like thing to do if you're not quite sure how to present your data because you need a compelling story. Story, story, story. That's what it's all about. Don't go further until you've got a story, until you can sit down with someone and be like, I've got this paper and it says this in these ways. Is that compelling? If you can't do that, you don't have a paper. Keep going until you do that. All right then, let's get on to the next step. All right, the next step that I would use to create a paper using AI is looking at the discussions and conclusions. So it's this bit down here because this is the punch of your paper. I'm gonna do that again because I liked it. That is the punch of your paper. You need this to be the thing that people remember. They need to be like, oh, there was a paper that blah, 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 blah. That is the big memorable take home thing that you need to work on. So there are AI tools that can help you do that. Clearly the large language models, Claude and uh, ChatGPT and uh, Perplexity and Gemini, absolutely love them. It's a really great way you could put in your data. You could put in something and say, hey, I really need a big take home message. Could you help me brainstorm this? But this is where sort of like PaperPal also starts helping you. PaperPal is a fantastic tool. So here you can go into their document uh, creator and down the side you've got all of these things. You can edit, you can rewrite, you can write, you can cite, you can uh, translate, you've got templates. So look, brainstorm, AI disclosure. You've also got uh, manuscript section templates. So this is where I think the most powerful tool is, is in Paper Pal. It does allow you to write all of the important parts. And you can see here, you've got brainstorm. I would use that to brainstorm this discussion and conclusions. And then I would not move forward until I had these two down and were really happy with them. I will have a story so that I take people through the process. And I've got this, the big punch, the take home message that everyone will remember. And only then do I start filling out the rest of these things because without these two up here, there's no point in carrying on. You're going to find everything else down here frustrating. It's frustrating as it is, but it's going to be even more frustrating. But once we're happy with here, we've got our results and discussion, we've got a conclusion. This is where we can start using AI tools to fill in all of those really annoying parts of writing a peer reviewed paper. All right, then the next section is this one, the literature review or introduction, or maybe a little combo of both, depending on your field. Um, this is not very big in my field, but ultimately it gives you a little bit of a sense of the foundation on which your stuff is um, uh, founded. So you have to make sure that uh, this literature review covers the important parts to allow you to frame your story and make people understand why your discussion and conclusions are important and need to be published to know the world. So this is where it can really help to use tools like SciSpace. SciSpace is so brilliant. They've got their agent at the moment. And if I'm writing a literature review, it's one of the first places I go to. Consensus, if you need to work out what the actual field is saying about your work right now, Consensus, I don't think there's a better tool out there. And then if you have your own references, which you should anyway, you could interrogate them in something like Notebook LM where you put them all in and you say something like, could you tell me um, all of the uh, background information relating to and then describe your story, describe your discussion and conclusions and it will give you an output that you could potentially use to frame that literature review or your introduction. And then also tools like Answer This also provide a literature review um, sort of like output. These are the simple ways now that you can 
use to get a introduction or literature review around a particular field it's never been easier because once you've done that then you've set the basis you've got the um, results and the discussion the conclusion now it's all of this other stuff you need to fit in which is this abstract methodology etc there's so many etc in this bit okay this is what this looks like all right, I'm not going to sort of like completely throw new tools at you. I think we've covered all of the big ones that can be used in this section. So abstract, this little bit up here, methodology, this little bit down here, even acknowledgements it can help you with. And also sometimes when you're submitting a peer reviewed paper, you need to do keywords, you need to do a layperson summary. But ultimately, all of these sections are really writable in something like paper pal or your favorite large language model. Simple, easy. Let's just go to that again because we love it here it is look you can go here get a template let's go to this one you can manuscript uh, section templates and then say you know what i need an abstract and then abstract will scan the text in the document and develop an abstract for you it doesn't get easier than that does it you just write what you want to write and it will generate the abstract after you've got the sort of like bulk of the document done yeah absolutely love that and you can also do something similar with uh, chat gpt claude the one thing i would say about that is when you are let's go to full screen again because i love it oh when you are using chat gpt or claude what i would do is put in examples of abstracts that you like in the field and the papers that you are submitting so you can sort of say here are three abstracts in this field write an abstract based on my paper using you know the same structure or the same template or the same whatever then you are providing it with like the best case structures for it to sort of build out your one easy peasy lemon squeezy <laughs> Yes. All right, then we're just getting into the best bits of writing a manuscript, which is the bit when it's over. So now we've got AI review. So the one thing I recommend is Thesify. Thesify really is my favorite one at the moment. Thesify gives you feedback on all of the sections. It tells you whether or not you've fallen short in certain ways that you're backing up your claims with data. It absolutely uh, does such a great job. So this would be my go to Thesify. But also one thing that Thesify doesn't do that PaperPal does do. Oh, look, we're back in PaperPal. This isn't sponsored, by the way. This is just PaperPal is down here. Plagiarism check and submission check. Plagiarism check, submission check. You would probably want to do something like that before um, submitting it to a journal. This submission check I've done in the past. Let's see. Uh, yeah, you can see down here that it gives you suggestions of what you should change and it just makes it super easy. So it's already trusted by journals. Um, it speeds up the review process on the other end. It also allows you to see any blind spots, any weaknesses in your paper. So I think a combination of Thesify and PaperPal and also using Paper Wizard, which is still really good. Um, it's more like a in-depth review, like a grumpy peer reviewer. Um, but using that means that you'll be able to get good feedback on your work quickly and then we go to the bit that no one likes to do which is the manual review so the last thing that you need to do is a manual review there is no shortcut in the fact that you have to be accountable for every single word that you've put in your peer-reviewed paper that you're putting out for submission and peer review. So here, you need to make sure that you read the paper and also this manual review not only should be done by you, but your supervisor, your collaborators, your colleagues. And this is one of the most annoying things is that once you get to this bit, everyone has got their own little opinions, but it's up to you as the sort of like primary author of this paper to be like, you know what? I'll just kind of uh, ignore this little little bit or you know I'll put more weight on here okay this is up to you you don't have to do everything your collaborator says but you do have to make sure they're happy with the final submission yeah that's how it goes so here manual review this is the last little bit and then if you're not happy with anything here you can jump back to any one of these sections and try again ideally you wouldn't go back this far because you've got the story people are happy with the story it's a submittable kind of like full story that you haven't salami sliced up this is a nice bit of work so you can jump back to this one, this one, and this one. Um, ideally, you'd leave this alone because there's no point in doing the rest of it unless you've got this stuff. And then, ah, uh, then you have the beautiful manuscript. Ah, and that's where you put it out for peer review and uh, the peer reviewers shatter your own sort of like self-worth and confidence because they are having a shitty life. So you need to have a shitty life too, apparently. No, it's part of the process. It's called peer review. It's not you, it's them, but also, it is just a brutal way of 
doing all this work and then being told that you've done it wrong in all of these ways and they don't like you. That's what it feels like anyway. All right, there it is. AI for peer review. There's a workflow. Let me know how it works for you. If you like this video, go check out this one where I do the same thing, but for literature reviews and the AI workflow that will make it mwah, mwah, chef's kiss. Go check it out.